I always started. What it do, Juice Crew, for those watching and those listening? Hello, good evening. How are you? Don't really matter. You must be good because you're tuned in. That ugly young man you see on the screen right there is none other than if you read the description, which most of y'all don't read. That is the Darius Smurf Chapman. I would say, you know, Memphis is on, but he low key. But I'm trying to, I want to change the view for it so I can get a view of you, bro. Oh, there you go. Let's do it like that. I would say Memphis is on, but he switched on us for Nashville. Uh, but nonetheless, Memphis is on the Darius Smurf Chapman. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. How about yourself, my brother, Nico? I was good until I had to inform them that you decided to swap on us for Nashville. But, you know, shout out to Nashville, 615. I ain't necessarily, I ain't necessarily swap, you know. <laughs> That's what it feel like. I mean, I can't speak to everybody, but I speak to somebody, and then somebody's me, and I feel like a switch. We just had that conversation a week ago. Yeah, I ain't necessarily switch, man. It's just I've been embraced in a different place. And plus, I started... I started doing something new out here, and mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying. I guess I thrived in this first certain place, so you know, just I, got I, in I, where I fit in. Okay, I can rock with that. I can rock with that because, contrary to popular belief, I started in that deal too. If you remember, got the grass table. Uh, I did my first two open mics at a uh, in Nashville. Actually, Are you you over there? You rolling up, bro? What you got going? Mm. Rolling up? Now I'm getting a cigar. Okay, okay. I, I was bringing a cigar too. So, yeah. We on the same page. Just, but yeah, just, I started just, my, my comedy journey in Nashville too. So I can't be too mad at you, bro. That's all good, bro. But nonetheless, those who don't know, which most of y'all hopefully do know, uh, this is a childhood friend of mine who I actually kind of forced him into doing comedy because I wanted to do videos. And this nigga was the only one that was available for me to do them. So, you know, kind of had to talk him into it, man. When you when you say you got, you got kind of got uh, bamboozled into comedy, bro? I wouldn't necessarily say bamboozled into comedy. I always been kind of like silly. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I do, I kind of, like I, I embrace it all the way in. Obviously, you already know that. So, like, I always liked comedy, but stand-up comedy, I, 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 you can necessarily say I got bamboozled into that part. Like, cause I was just, like you remember, I was just coming up there to support you, watch you do your open mics. And she I still got the like, video. Yeah, and you was, and yo, what, what you guys said? Man, go ahead, go up there, bro. Go ahead. I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to do this shit. And I should have needed somebody to go with me. I was like, bro. I didn't need one, bro. Like, I still got the video, bro. You had on all black. You had on black hoodie, black pants, and black shoes. I had on black hoodie, some gray pants, uh, some gray shorts, and um, my slides. Of course, anybody that know me know I'm always in slides 80% of the time. But yeah, bro, I still got the video. I just went through and watched them just the other night. And um, what I will say is growth is extremely real from when we first started. So, man, I mean, we still growing, but it's definitely, it's definitely a journey, and People who don't even know, he was actually, we both were athletes, but he was the one that went another step further. I went to college and, you know, was in the midst of doing it, but he actually did it. Uh, did you, did you, you went to Austin Peay, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So why you? Why did you, what happened with football? Uh, uh, I love football, hate school. I went I to school. I, well, I, went to, I went to football practice. I didn't uh, when I had an eight o'clock class, I just get up, look out the window, like man, fuck that class, and go back to sleep. I, I didn't, I didn't go to class at all. I remember one of our conversations to let me know you were not for school, bro. I called you, bro. I was, I think, I forgot what I was. But I called you. I was like, bro, what you got going? She was like, mm, nothing, man. Really, just waking up, probably be in class, but just waking up. I'm like, bro, I would be. I'm like, all right, whatever, everybody had them days, but I think I called you a couple days and you was just like supposed to be in class. I was like, yeah, y'all. These NFL drafts, let's Murph go to the G League for football. I, I don't see him going to the NFL. Cause school, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get through school somewhat to get to 
you know, to lead. You got to maintain. Man, they need to make it to where I'm telling the NCAA when all with one of these schools or something need to make it to where you can do a trade. You can do a trade going into college instead of going up there trying to do these English social studies, all this stuff that's like informed in a certain way. They need to go and get a trade because have these folks that be athletes, then we don't learn that type of way. We learn hands on. We let us go into school and get a trade. I guarantee it's gonna be way better, better athletes all the way through. Yeah, but yeah. The, but the trade ain't the thing about it. A trade take you year year and a half tops. You ain't. It depends. It depends. It depends on which trade you take. True. Honest, that's, what I, that's what I was getting at. Like year, year, year and a half. But uh, what I would say, like you you can switch it. You can switch it around. Like who who's to say since like uh kids since uh the ca- co- college athletes. I'm studying the college athletes. You know what I'm saying? Can get paid it's now. Somebody daddy, it? The kids. Yeah. <laughs> we, we old enough to be somebody daddy shit. But some of these, like, since the college athletes can get paid while they're in school, why not they do the first two years getting a trade and then the last two years if they want to, like the last year, they mess around and, you know what I'm saying, get a part time job? In the same field that's working under, or they, you know, what I'm saying, it, it's all type of all type of ways they can do this to where it can work out to benefit the kids more than you know, what I'm saying, the colleges, and it still could benefit the colleges. It ain't no telling how they can how it work, but yeah, they, or they can be do a, 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 a apprenticeship or an internship. You know, it's all type of stuff that they can do rather than what they doing now. Because I guarantee, if I could have went straight in and got a trade, I would. I, I, I probably could have. Made a chance to be in the league, maybe. I mean, if we if we gonna go there, we gonna I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper because this ain't about just comedy. This is this is I want to talk to. You. So we're gonna dig a little deeper um, and go as far as saying, yeah, I think you could have because you know, shout out to my boy. We say this first. Shout out to my boy Chris, uh, Christian Wilkinson. Y'all follow him on Twitter at K Wilk. I think it is K Wilk. Uh, my boy uh, came in, in like two years after us in high school. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, long story short, y'all know how Kobe did and Michael Jordan. Smurf was Michael Jordan and Chris was Kobe. Clearly, that's the best comparison I got for it. He was Michael, you Michael Jordan and he Kobe because Chris didn't talk to nobody. Chris just was with us all the time. And mm-hmm. Chris eventually blossomed into this, this just, just, Monster, where college I mean, is like. Let, let's let's be real, because one thing for sure, I don't, I'm I'm pretty sure you kind of knew, but me and Jacque knew off the rip. He was a beast. We he just needed to get he he like you know how sometimes you just gotta like when you get that baby, you just gotta mold his head. All he had to do was be molded a little bit, and I like all he had to do was see a couple of us play a couple of times to to know exactly what to do at different times or what you want to do. Cause it was already there. Any sport he chose, I feel like he could have went. He could have went far. Basketball, football, anything that he was driven on, he could have went far with it regardless. Christian, Chris, 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 he, he Chris is one of them dudes that he didn't talk. Like you could talk crap. I'm trying to have cash money to him. You know what he gonna do? And Chris played wide receiver, and Smart did too. So I think we forgot that part. I forget that we know each other. They don't know you. So uh-huh. Smurf play and Chris played wide receiver. So now Smurf would do this to a certain extent too, but he still would have something to say. Like, if you're talking crazy, Smurf, Smurf, me, tell me if I'm wrong, Smurf would do you dirty on the field and right after the play, then he'll say something. Right? I used to. Now, now, <laughs> I'm a different type of monster now, man. It, with everything I do now, I, I talk my shit now. But see, you weren't like me. I'm 5'8". So everybody on everybody that I came in contact with six and above. So I gotta talk. But Chris, Chris don't say a word. Chris gonna do what he's gonna do. And the most Chris will do is come to the sideline and smile at us and laugh. That's it. Chris didn't hardly talk. Chris ended up going to uh what was CMO? Southeast Missouri. The, the Southeast school Missouri. I passed on. So he did he, he, he did small. Who Smurf passed on? Chris now owns probably every receiver record at this school. Like 
I, he he owns every record in that school and almost got every record, every receiving record in uh that conference and, uh, in the OVC conference. I knew it. And let's just say Chris been on the roster with Tom Brady and is still on the roster with Cam Newton as his quarterback. And Chris is slowly but surely climbing the ranks. So keep grinding, bro. If you're watching this, and uh, shout out to you. But yeah, we we figured off. But yeah, so Smurf started, you know, as an athlete. And who was some of your favorite athletes coming up? Favorite athletes off the top. Uh, football. We already know Chad Johnson, Chad Ocho Cinco, Ladainian sure. Thomas. Hey, some of them don't even know his last name, really, Johnson. Yeah, Chad Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson. That's hands down number one. Ladanian Thompson, and it, it, that's about it for me. I I really could care less about anybody else. Okay, I I can I mess with that because you know Chad Johnson, my guy too. Chad Johnson is one of the first NFL players I heard tell the ref, uh, hey, you got your whistle? He's like, yeah, I got it. He's like, toss it to the, uh, what he's like, toss it to the, uh, toss it to the bleacher. He's like, what am I tossing for? They ain't gonna be around me quick enough, uh, long enough for you to blow a whistle on. I was like, oh, that's gangster. And went out there and put up 200 plus. And he told the cornerback, he's like, hey, there's the fourth quarter. You ain't put a hand on me all game. I'm gonna do you a solid. I'm gonna make you not look bad on camera. He lined up. Did the little tap, the corner jam. He's like, I ain't even want the ball. Well, there you go. I told, uh, he said, I told Carson, don't even look my way. Don't look my way. That's when I was like, yeah, Chad Johnson is definitely top five favorite athletes and top five favorite Chicago of all time. All time. But, but I think us having a shit talking, bugging us is what I know it led me to come. Because you can only hear you getting on somebody's nerves for so long because you play too much before you be like, you know what, let me take this on stage and see if I play too much the right way. Uh, for me, it wasn't like, you know, see, you knew I was silly. A lot of people didn't know I was silly. A lot of people didn't know I was even funny, let alone silly. So, uh, like, uh, only like close friends, you know, family, you, and, and you know, our circle knew that I had, like, I could tap into that that funny level rather than just being serious. Because all I did during school, everybody think I was a class clown. All I did during school was sleep. I just slept through all my classes, wake up, pass the test, and go back to sleep. I, I, I wasn't. He got scholarships. I wasn't doing half the stuff. My senior year, I had to kick kick into a new mode to get A's and B's. Did that and went right back to sleep. So like, <laughs> didn't nobody get to see the real personality behind me. Which is probably why, uh, which is probably why I took a lot of people by surprise when I went into comedy the way that I did, like uh, just doing skits first, and then you know growing to the point to where I was able to do stand up comedy uh, on the level that I do it now. I, I, I guess you can say I'm starting to get real respect in, in stand up comedy and real respect in skit comedy. So. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. Even though every everything that I jumped into, I always caught everybody by surprise. You know, being a diesel mechanic, then doing comedy, then going into stand-up comedy, because it's that's two different ball games. Get comedy and stand up is two different ball games. You know, ain't no shame in nobody else doing and nobody doing it. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing skit comedy, respect to you, if you're doing stand-up comedy, respect to you. But that stand-up is a whole different ball game. Oh, it for sure is, cause um, my first. Let me see. The first time I actually considered doing comedy, I did a skit, and I was just like, "Oh, I'm funny." And I listened to my sitting there like, "Nah, man, that ain't it. Like that ain't it. That ain't it." And um, and I tell people all the time, it's 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 a difference in being internet funny or family barbecue funny, and you know the stage. Cause the people that's laughing at your online stuff or your family barbecue stuff probably nine times out of ten know you. The crazy, the one of the most craziest occupations and probably the most craziest occupation is comedy. Why? Right? I got to get up in front of a group of random strangers and make you realize I'm funny. That's mm -hmm. that's that's crazy. And like, I don't know. It's just just the thought of. Bro, like, I don't know. I guess I look at it like the, the 
I couldn't imagine doing it without doing it with somebody, especially if I know you funny. Like, bro, think about how many times I was like, bro, like, come on, let's do what we do. We started doing ski, and then we were like, ah, let's try this stage out. You know what I'm saying? Everybody runs to the stage, and you you definitely are gaining, you know, much, much, much deserved respect in the comedy uh, game, because Nashville is very hot for comedy. I mean, Memphis, we getting there. Uh, shout out to my boys, the Code Kids. I'm going to shout you out. We talk about comedy in Memphis. Um, but Memphis is definitely getting there, and I see you I don't want to use the term politics. I don't want to use proper ghetto terminology uh, uh, saying politicking, but that's what we call it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, oh, while I'm thinking about it, speaking of politicking, we just did me, me and Smurf just had a show together uh, about two weekends. July 10th. Yep. See, he he knew right off real. And I will say I watched him, we had two shows on the same day. I watched him do both shows and it was it was a difference in the boat and it was like I felt like like a proud dad was like look that thing wasn't <laughs> coming until I told the dude look at I told um what was the dude name with the glasses was it Jack uh, the glasses yeah the short one I think Bob had 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 on the glasses it was only two white ones in, in the performance. He said short. The other white boy with the glasses is not the one Greg brought. Not the Man. one. Man. Yeah. I knew it was some white. Very white. Matt Taylor. Yeah. I even told Matt, I was like, bro, look, 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 look. That's my son. I, I made him do that. But yeah, it was definitely, it was a difference in in your comedy because like you went from trying to make people believe money to like, I'm funny. And I know I am. So here you go. Eat this up. Like you, you did a joke, and I ain't gonna give you like you did a joke uh, at the end of the first show, and I I promise I had I almost cried through that. It was so funny. I ain't gonna give it away, but you know what your joke was at the end of the show, the first one, and it was so funny, bro. And like whenever we do a show, we we get to kick it, we politic with everybody, and I and talking to. Of a comment. Let's 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 let the, hold on. Let's take the politic out, cause you know what I'm saying. One thing that's that's the uh, the beauty in comedy is not necessarily uh, we not politic. Mm-hmm. It's you know, if you feel like somebody funny, that's the people that you like to kick it around. So you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, politic and it's like, oh, I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna kick with you so you can feel more comfortable with me being around you more. But in comedy, it's like, man, I feel like you a good dude. You a smooth dude. You know what I'm saying? I guess you rubbing shoulders with a person for so long to where it become a bond. You know, in comedy, it's easy to become like become friends with somebody because like <clears throat> being on stage, uh, you giving a you making yourself vulnerable to a whole crowd, and especially when That's another comic, to. yeah, when 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 another comic seeing you do these jokes over and 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 mold it to another level. You know what I'm saying? And they able to talk to you afterwards about these jokes and grow them and build them and stuff like that, and uh, even help you build that certain joke. They become a real bond to a whole other level. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's politics. It's more so like just doing a show with somebody to give you a like just like say you do one show with somebody that stay out of town. All of a sudden, y'all didn't like every time you in town, that's who you hit up now. You know what I'm saying? That's who I want to link with. That's the person I want to do this and that. So it ain't like comedy. It like you know, in movies and all this shit, like they will do a video, do a movie together, and that's like okay, cool. You go by your way, I go by my way. In comedy, when I'm doing this and I'm opening up to everybody, and you see this shit, then I probably do two or three shows with you in one night. That's a bond. If I go anywhere and I know you stay there, that's my friend. Nigga. I'm hitting him up first. What, hey, what I need to do in this city? What I need to do in that? What I need to do here? You coming with me? I need to come with you. I'm just gonna follow you. Some shit like that, you yeah. know. So it ain't politics. Comedy is it, it, you get a new family without even asking for it. Mm. Like Kanan, Kanan is Kanan which I got on his podcast. Look, I I started doing comedy right. I started like doing stand up comedy right before the pandemic, and he was one of the comics that's been doing it for years. Yeah, Kanan, the dude with the glasses. Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay, yeah, you did. His, I remember. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, you did a show with him one time. 
Oh, well, I said, yeah, now I remember him. He's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And um, basically, he was one of the people that was doing it for years and chose to keep doing it while the pandemic was going on. And he saw me grow from like, okay, I bombed for like a motherfucker when everybody telling me, okay, hey, you did good. Then I'm like, bitch, I bombed. I don't give a fuck. Hey, I, I, I'm not talking about that in a minute. I hate that. I don't care what nobody else tell me. Like, hey, man, it's a good set. I bombed. And he was like, you one of the, like, when I first started, he was like, you one of the people that was comfortable saying, yeah, I bombed. I ain't tripping. What I'm alive for? Everybody see it. Yeah, no, it, everybody. Uh, some some people don't know when they bombed and when they did. I mean, when, when they did their thing. Like, when they get two laughs out of the crowd and they like, oh, yeah, I ain't bombed. No. Um, <laughs> it's still bombed. But in first uh, 19 and a half minutes, you bomb. <laughs> yeah, you bomb. You might need to change some of them jokes around. It's cool. I, I I had it before. But like I said, man, in comedy, you get family without asking for them. Oh, yeah. Because I ain't asked for Greg all the little titties have now. But I definitely fuck with Greg, that, what, the first time I met Greg, let me tell you. First I time so I met stupid. Greg, I, I was like, he is, he's, I was like, this thing, he is ignorant, bro. I cannot see myself kicking with this dude like The man said, I got five kids, and they all look like they mom, and it make me mad, because they look like fucking pugs. Bro, do you know how <laughs> terrible of a person you got to be to say that about your kids, and it be funny? <laughs> it's funny, but I ain't going to lie. He got, he got two of his kids actually look like him. I'm going to tell you that. Two of his kids actually looks like him. Now the rest, he, he, he's he's been yeah, point. Really he, he's on with it with it with they look like their mom. But Greg, you talking about Greg? You talking about your kids and your baby mom, Greg? Huh? He don't care. He go he go add to. He go yo. Yeah, I, like, I know Greg. I need to call him right now. I'm supposed to link with him tomorrow for his kids. I got a funny. I got a funny ass kid coming up tomorrow. Well, we well they on the lookout for it now. Now hilarious. Now, you know, how, how you meet Greg? Where he going? Um. I met great. It's it's crazy as hell. Like Nashville is like big but small at the same time, just like Memphis, but even smaller. Trust me, even smaller. Everybody know everybody. I had did an open mic at uh, Everything Born Lounge where we did our first two shows, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, two or three, two shows, and um, basically I seen Greg perform. His brother is, is a comedian, Swiss. And Swiss been doing comedy for a while. Was the big dude though, though, wasn't he? Yeah. I was like, bro, I ain't this hot, bro. These folk kind of look alike, bro. No, they they, they, like they adopted. All right, them niggas look alike a little bit. They've been around, they've been around, around each other too long. But uh basically, uh Swiss did exactly what did exactly what you did for me to Greg. <laughs> But it, it was, it was a, a fucked up way. It was basically like, bro, your, your life fucked up. You may as well try comedy. That's basically how he did Greg. But it's the bad way to get a nigga to do it, though. <laughs> it worked, but Greg, he, he flourishing in it. So uh, for sure. For sure. basically, basically, uh, Greg did his set. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I think both of us bombed that night. But no, no, that night I, I killed shit. I killed shit. I had I invited a lot of people out, so I was doing some of my good jokes. So pause, no pause, y'all. Nothing this man do irks me more than what. Prime example, he come to Memphis. I say, bro, let's do an open mic. This is the last time he did it. I said, bro, let's do an open mic together. Let's go to the club. I'm always at. Y'all, y'all. Y'all, this nigga invited everybody short of his great grandparents to the open mic. Y'all, I've never bombed so they bad. They forced me. Life. They forced me. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. You told your mama. And your I said I said I was gonna do an open mic to my mama, and and uh, my grandma was like, "Huh?" She she was in the other room. <laughs> she said, "Huh? Where you going? I'm coming." I said, "Oh, I'm doing an open mic here," and she was like, "Okay." And when I left. Like to link with other people because you know I'm on, I'm only in Memphis for probably like two or three days at a time. Y'all listen to this and then tell y'all truth. Go ahead. I left mm -hmm. and went somewhere else and like uh 
I think my daddy asked me what I was doing for the rest of the day. I told him. I ain't tell nobody else. But my my mama and my grandma told all of my family on my mama's side. No exaggeration. All of them. Everybody. And I think I say all the seats was filled for an open mic. <laughs> my nigga, I say I got upset. I'm gonna kill it. Like I know it's perfected finally. I'm gonna try it. Y'all, I didn't even know. My other best friend and his woman was in the crowd. Y'all, I get on stage. I'm doing my joke about. He was a facts writer. I'm a hundred percent facts. Every word that's coming out of my mouth is facts, and he's here to 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 second it. Y'all, I get on stage. I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna mess with him, and then I'm like, damn. And my mom like, man, this nigga, that's my mom. Okay, yeah, that's my mom. Okay, whatever. I keep going. Yeah, I get ready to do my joke about cheating. I turn and I'm just looking for any man in the crowd that's not related to Smurf at this point. I see this dude, all I see is eyes. He got a mask and a hat on. Yeah, I'm like, bro, you know, you, you know what it's like when you get caught cheating? And I look, I say, oh, like literally, I'm like, oh, I turn because I'm like, I realize that's that's my neck. I oh no, we're not gonna do that. Like, that's my guy. No, we're not doing that. Yeah, I turn. This is when I realized Smurf has invited the whole family tree. Because I turn, I'm like, okay, literally, in my mind, I ain't said another word on stage. I'm like, okay, you know, Smurf grandma, Smurf mama, Smurf daddy, they go Z, they go they go, they go, they go, they go, they go. Bruh, mind go completely blank. Like God just went, ah. on my mind, it just cleared it out. I was like, but all right, y'all, that's my time, y'all. Uh, y'all follow me on social media. And Nico the man and got off stage, y'all. I still had two minutes left. I don't even think I had two. I think I had three left. I started two jokes and couldn't finish them, y'all. That is so, that nothing he does bothers my soul more than he invite everybody in their mama, y'all. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't care. But when you start noticing people, and you got a microphone in your hand, and you are you have no filter between brain and mouth, and you just drop down. Yeah, I didn't do jokes. I'm literally on stage like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Man, let me get off stage. Let me go there. Add an ovation. <laughs> All this. I'm just, I'm so angry. Then I leave. Who's the first person to say something to me? My homeboy who was sitting in the crowd. He's like, hey, bro, what you, what you got going, bro? You know, I'm like, bro, I didn't know that was you. I didn't know you were coming. <laughs> How did you sit that close? Because I started searching for any spot that didn't have Smurfs family. And when I found one, it was somebody That's else it. I should have seen. <laughs> um, but, that, but I ain't gonna lie, from that situation, I learned that from you. Like, uh, just seeing you do that, um, I learned real quick is, uh, don't ever like hesitate to do whatever you want to do. Either. Like even if I necessarily said it to to our, our homeboy, we ain't gonna say his name. Uh, even if I necessarily said it to him, I'm offended. It's a joke, but I might die down for the lady. Be like, look, you know, he he he, he, he got a good heart. You know, he's still here with you because he love you. you know what I saying? couldn't do it. You know why? I ain't gonna say no name. Looked at me like, nigga. <laughs> I, I remember that face. Like, oh, go ahead, tell me. Yeah, he got he looking at yeah. me blinking. That's what made me realize who it was. I was like, oh no, oh no, we ain't doing that. But, but the beauty, the beauty in comedy is they never know if you dead serious or not. The beauty of stand up comedy, they like some people probably be in the crowd like I feel like this motherfucker telling the truth, or he or this this is life. And then the other side would be like, he's just playing. It's too funny to be real. Like, that's all they think about. Because sometimes if you have a good joke, it's just laying so hard. Motherfuckers be like, he he twisted that shit around. It can't be real. No, this shit is real life. A hundred percent real. Majority of the joke. No, I'm not going to say majority of the jokes because people go watch this and then they're going to see one of my jokes and then they're going to be like, oh my God, he lived. Oh, that's through. real? He lived through that. So, yeah. so you really... Slip inside a donkey for seven days, eating only nah, the That's I, the I, I, I fucked the donkey looking bitch before, but it was. <laughs> oh, we going there too. We going there too. 
Wait, before, 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 excuse me, before we get, hey, my live listeners is listening right now. You, y'all getting the exclusive. Everybody else is watching this. Hey, what's your late ass? You should tune into the live. They getting this late. So shout out to y'all. Um, but, but before we get into to that and the other thing I want to talk about, we're going to finish Greg off. We're going we're gonna to go and finish your story with Greg. But you, boy, I okay. hate you. Fighting everybody. So, yeah, so basically, basically, you know what I'm saying? I said, I'm I was like, this don't seem like a dude I really kick with like that. And like, uh, obviously he kept doing comedy and uh, we ended up being in the same group on, 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 on in Nashville on Facebook. It's called uh, Be Social, shout out to, to my Be Social family. And um, well, it's it's like three different fucking groups. Like it's, it's a lot, but Be Social start is, is what it is now. And um, basically we just go out and you know what I'm saying? Uh, be out with other people that's from Nashville and stuff like that, or from outskirts that stay in Nashville. Nobody in Nashville is from fucking Nashville nowadays. I'm, I'm gonna say that right now, including me. So, the more we went out, the more I ended up linking with Greg, and the more open mics we got to, like I said, you get new family without even knowing it. We got to more mics more and more and been to more of it so many times after a while, I was like, I kind of got to get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, like that and, and eventually, the more we got to know each other, we started to see we think the same in a lot of cases. You know, he an entrepreneur, so everything he does is like Thank everything you. great. That's one thing that I can, I can, you know what I'm saying, salute Greg for. Everything that he touches, he going to make sure he can make, he can make his own money off of it. He's not going to work for nobody. Even though he's smart as fuck to work for a corporate company and make pl- make them plenty of money and him plenty of money. But he got to the point to where everything I touch, I can make myself money. I'm going to take a couple errors L's here and there, but I'm going to make myself this money and I'm going to provide for my kids however I want. You know what I'm saying? That's, I, I salute, and, and when I seen it ever, ever since then, I was like, bro, I, you know what I'm saying? This this the type of thing I need to be around. The one that want to work for himself, he's an entrepreneur. He gonna make something happen every day, even though his feet be stanky like a bitch at the end of the night. I said his feet be stanky. This nigga got something worse than athlete's foot. That nigga got goddamn gargoyle feet at, at this point. That shit is terrible, nigga. Hey, I got some ugly feet. That nigga did a detox. He did a detox. You know how when they had the colors of the detox thing. And it'd be like, like, like soft brown. That nigga shit was black. I was like, yo, shit, terrible. <laughs> bro, his feet were dead, dead bro. That nigga feet was black. His his ex girlfriend was like, every time you come home, she'd be like, leave your shoes outside, nigga. I don't. <laughs> don't you sleep in this bitch. You know, you know what's bad when the bitch that you fucking tell you to leave some shit that you brought outside. Leave that shit outside. Bring the dick. Outside. Bring the dick. Believe that they leave clothes outside. Bring the dick, believe the clothes outside. Dick go with my clothes go. Yeah, no. I can't be that getting that clean toe jam before he walk in the room. Wow. Yeah, man, Greg got Greg got a uh he got a food company, he got a uh, moving company, he do comedy, sell pussy, sell ass. Uh and he about to start a massage company. <laughs> Man, everything, man. Greg do it all, man. Shout out to my boy Greg, man. And uh, <coughs> his name on Instagram is Comedian Chef Greg. Two G. Do that how you got to do it. But so we're gonna change gears. But how do you handle? Because this is what a lot of people can't handle. And uh, yeah, yeah, I know our backgrounds. Well, my background is a bit different. I ain't big into that. Um. How do you handle bombing? Because everybody, like everybody handles it different. Yeah, because like me, how I handle bombing is, and bombing teaches you a lot. I didn't believe it until I started. You know, bombing here and there. Uh, the, the crowd loves to be insulted. I don't care how you slice it. Some of my funniest, no. It, 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 no, 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 wait, wait. It depends on where you at. In the South, totally. It, they, they definitely love to be insulted. I don't know why. They they like to go back and forth with somebody, and as soon as you you like win, they like it. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm like fuck you, nigga, and you'd be like dirty draws wearing that bitch mustard. 
mustard smelling ass draw. Like they have all type. You would say the most disrespectful shit. And mm-hmm. they're like, <laughs> I like that shit. Take your ass up north. <laughs> Take your ass up north to New York, Philadelphia. You bought yeah, it. You get out of bed. Yeah, and in, in, in them places they they go into comedy like because I got friends that moved up there. It's basically in New York and shit like that. They are going into comedy places and just looking for you to tell your jokes, and they just want to laugh. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And in the South, it's it, it's even though I love it so much, you know what I'm saying? They they go in sometimes they coming in and with the thought of. Uh, I'm I'm in a laughing mood, and sometimes they come in with, "Bitch, you gotta make me laugh. Show me you funny." I hate that. Show me you funny, I, but but I don't understand how you can buy a ticket and tell somebody that you want like like you gotta make me laugh. That's that's retarded in my eyes. But but I got some jokes for your bitch ass. Now if I see you bullshitting on the, my simple jokes. I'm gonna go pull out three finishers that I that I did the uh, three closing jokes that I, I got for different jokes. Uh, what's his name from that weekend with the hat food? From where? From when we the last show we had, he had the hat food. He had the hat like Sonya, uh, not Sonya Blade, like a uh, Kong Laos. Uh, black the, the tall dude. I can't name, I think his name. JC. Oh, oh, SG. Yeah, SG. SG was on stage. SG said, "Oh, uh, y'all ain't laughing, huh?" I got a joke that normally kids, if y'all don't laugh, whoop everybody ass in here. He said it. He got a couple of chuckles from the people because they was just flat and scared at that point. But that that's I, he coming like that. That nigga said he had a joke. He had a hat like Kung Lao. <laughs> yeah, fool. Yeah, bro. He got a hat like Kung Lao, bro. Got the that's all he had to do on that to <laughs> run his fingers across the front of it. That's my nigga SG. But um but that's that's just that's, that's perfect. Like you can see the separation in the two areas, but I say they like being in social because like like I said, how I handle bombing is okay, I'm, I know I'm bombing. You know I'm bombing because you ain't laughing. So I'm gonna theoretically slap you in the mouth real cool and then jump off stage. So one of my favorite things to do is like well, I've done it a few times. I ain't gonna say my favorite thing to do being in the stage. One of my things that I've done is like when I'm bombing, I say the joke, and then when they bomb, I do like, fuck y'all too, then. <laughs> Whole room gonna burst out laughing. Everybody. Then I'm like, all right, bitch, now I got your attention. Let's go to this other set that I got. And you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. or, or like, like Buddy said at the uh, show we had together. And I agree with him. I didn't think about it like that. He's like, bro, if you book for 10 minutes, at the five minute mark, you know what, how you going or not. He's like, so if it ain't going good, man, do you a high step and jump off stage. They'll understand and respect you more, whoever booked you, because you didn't stretch out a bad set. You didn't make them mm-hmm. do that, bro. You know what? I'm about to leave. As soon as this man can get off the stage. So, and I've seen people handle bombing, like, just walk off the stage. Like, they just walk off stage. And I'm like, bro. I've seen the worst. Of some people bombing to where they, <laughs> I'm gonna make you laugh one time, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they still don't get it. But it's like, even the, like what what I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say this one thing. I'm I'm not a bit, and I don't feel like I'm a bit in the game. I'm just a year in with this stand up comedy. But both, you know, learning, <laughs> like learning, and and like learn like learning fast is the best thing to do in anything that you're doing. So when you see somebody do something wrong or see some do see somebody do something where the crowd ain't really messing with it and learn from it, that's a good thing to do. But like doing certain things like, okay, if I'm bombing and I got like I'm featured or something like that, uh and I keep on going, like like you said, seven minutes is just gonna hit hop off. That's a small thing to do. But like I've like I ain't gonna lie, I've, I've had one time to where I came up and I was doing good. And the fact, and I seen the light and I said another joke and it didn't land. And I was like, damn, that was supposed to be my closing joke leading to the next joke. And I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna go ahead and get off this hole. Because I already made y'all laugh up like before this. You know what I'm saying? My opening joke hit like a closer. Second joke hit. Then a third joke 
kind of hit then let then you know what I'm saying the setup for the clothes was like no nothing at all I was like bitch I'm gonna go yeah then he <laughs> Oh, oh, one of my favorite friends. But my clothes, my clothes was terrible. My clothes was terrible. I, I was on stage. I was like, I was exactly like this. I said, "All right, I'm Smurf TV." And got the fuck off the stage. Sometimes you got to, bro. You just don't drag it out. Like literally, you got to. You, you. It's almost like in the UFC. Once you not, once you stop striking and just start strictly defending, why drag out this beat? Like let's stop. You you clearly can't. You can't. You're not doing nothing. You can't do nothing else to make it better, bro. Let's just let's just call the space fade and end it. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's what people struggle with the most uh, in comedy. It's acceptance. That's that's how it is. It, it, acceptance and rejection. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you see the crowd is is rejecting you, because uh, I'm that that's how I am with women in, in, in general. So if I shoot my shot subtly. If I shoot my shot subtly, and and you just swap that bitch down, bitch, next bitch, I'm not, I'm not about to keep shooting yeah. shots at you. Like even even in, even in in DMs, I'm not one of the people that usually shoot DMs anyway. But like if I just give you a compliment and you just don't respond, okay, Hollywood, I will go to the next bitch. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not about to keep shooting shots at you, or I'm not gonna show you that I'm interested in on the level. To do this, so I translate that to everything that I do in general. Wait, pause it. I gotta say this to you before I forget. You remember uh, at the show that light skinned girl that Buddy was talking to, the one when he, uh, the other dude, the other big dude that was performing, and she was all up on, you know, just indulging in all that. And Ivy, uh, huh? Ivy. Yeah, I think was that her name? Yeah, that was her name. With the with the the shirt stuff. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So, Buddy was like, uh, she started liking pictures and all that. And the man said, he DM'd her. Uh, he said she didn't open it, so he unsent it that night, <laughs> and then sent the fresh one the next morning. And it was like, oh, okay, so you see it, but you play. Okay, bet cool. Like you say, up oh, next one, and that's what he said. And I was like. I can respect that. Okay, bro. You know, push on to the next one. Like, nah, I'm not. I'm. I don't give. A, I don't give a if you accidentally deleted my first message. I'm never. Man, I'm never messaging you again. You gonna have to say something to me, or you have to put a hard eye under my uh under one of my my posts, and then I'm be like, bitch, bitch. I, I I shot my shot at you before. Remember that. Remember. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna let you know. Oh yeah, you got. So you look. I've yeah, done that before. It was one time I had linked. I had linked with uh. With uh with a girl and like I wasn't trying to talk to him or nothing like that. I, I was trying to like get a chemistry before we did a skit. Like dead serious. I was trying to like I was trying to do a skit and I was like, I'm not like I understand, like we on a we just uh linking as friends <laughs> right now so we can do a skit and have chemistry while we're doing it. And um Louis out, I was like, Yeah, uh you ghosted me last time, bitch. <laughs> She, had, she, she had, was like, no, I ain't really mean to ghost you like that. I was like, I don't know what's up with women. And they like, when you ghost a nigga, don't, don't lie and say you didn't mean to. Bitch, you did. You knew it. Just like, just like, uh, what they say? Bill uh, Cosby didn't mean to roof y'all the women, but. No, that, you, you, you gonna get canceled. <laughs> but, but, uh. What they say, you make time for what you want to make time for. Yep, make time for what's important. That's exactly what's going on. Don't don't say, oh, I didn't mean to. I just was busy. You was making time for what you wanted to make time for. The nigga that that was that toxic dick you was you was clinging on to. Stick with that. It's okay. I'm not even trying to fuck you. I'm just trying to do a skit, baby. No, they don't hear that. They don't hear that. They automatically hear we we in them. That's how they. But I, but I'm, I'm gonna be real. I understand. Yes, yes. I understand yes, yes. because some women, like so these niggas, fuck it up for niggas. Yes, like, yes, no, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. But, no. uh, these a lot of these dudes mess it up for for niggas like me or you. They they mess it up for us 
because a lot of these folks be creeps and they be like, hey, let's do a skit. And then they be like, yeah, I got some wine too. Like, get the fuck. Oh. Bro, that's why I like I don't I don't ask brother what the last time I asked a female to do a skit, I invited her to a comedy show. You were there. I invited her to a comedy show in this in wanting to do a skit, turned into trying to gain chemistry for the skit. And I was like, okay, I, I kind of get what you're saying. And then it turned into just a complete weird situation. So yes, that's why I don't do that. We're gonna have to meet in person. Like if we on a show like the girl, we was on the show with. Uh, the lady that was, I said, tagged me and everything, but didn't follow me. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I can. That, that's my that's my comedy mama right there. That's CJ. I, I got one too. Shout out to uh, Latoya Tanier. But um, that's why I didn't do that. And oh, glad you said that. So, you gonna be the second person that I put through this ringer, okay? Uh, we're gonna move on to the Let's Get Awkward segment of the show where I ask you a couple awkward things and you know, I'm going to do something new now. I'm going to add a time limit on the answers. So it's going to be fast and awkward. Cool? Okay? All right? So your time limit is 10 seconds. All right, moving on. Let's get awkward. First question. Are you single and why are you single? I start the timer when you start. Okay. I'm I'm single and I'm single because it's my fault. I don't trust these uh, hoes. <laughs> that's a great response. I get into a, I get into a relationship, and as soon as I get into a relationship, I see flaws. Bitch, you blinking too loud. You gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great answer. Everybody said you blinking too loud. You gotta go. All right, question number two. Hmm, if you had any superpower, what would it be and why? Uh, any superpower, it would be flying, cause I I get tired of driving. And the traffic in there, you like. Definitely. Oh no, Murfreesboro to Nashville right now. It, as long as I can get a windshield so the bugs won't hit me, but bugs don't go that high in the air. You just want a visor? Yeah, if I just need a visor, I'll fly. Definitely. All right, bet. Then it'd cool. be nice to have that shit on the basketball court, too. Niggas be like, hey, that nigga got some, he got some bunnies. Yes, nigga. All right, question number three. If you could do any drug and not be addicted, what would it be? Any drug and not be addicted? Any drug and not be addicted. Adderall. Why? Because I can be more productive throughout the day. Hmm. That ain't bad. I know you really thought about that because y'all got some super quick. I'm still doing the countdown just to move on. All not right. Necessarily. Not necessarily. I know it wouldn't be weed because I hate myself on weed. All right. Next question. Why do you hate yourself on weed? Go ahead. I hate myself on weed because I get uh, a little too ignorant, to be honest. I don't think my pro- I don't think things through. You impulsive on weed. Impulsive and ignorant. Like I said, I, I I just do certain shit or say certain shit that don't make sense, or I I feel like I get stupid. That's just me. You know, everybody got different side effects. Some people get smart as fuck on weed, including you. You one of them people that get smart, get fuck, but you but you getting super deep though. You know what I'm saying? Like some people get so deep in thought and they be like, nigga, you on a whole other conversation. I done went on three now and you still on two. <laughs> it makes sense. All right. Last but not least, you can shoot your shot at anybody, celebrity or regular female. This is your opportunity because you are very much single. Who would it be and why? Ooh. I give you two shots to shoot. Two shots? Neil Long and Sonia Lathan. All right, I'm gonna take that back down to one because they're one and the same. Go ahead. One and the same? Not necessarily because it's not a late, and I feel like she's one of them single, them them single women that's working on themselves type type thing. Yeah, but Nia Long, but Nia Long, I feel like she's single and she she fucking young niggas. So you know what I'm saying? That's that's a different type of thing. I feel like I have to work for tonight. But Nia, I can stroke a little bit. But you know what I'm saying? I can stroke her a couple times to the point where she be like, okay, this is good dick. I might stick with this nigga. You know what I'm saying? So Neil Long, if you're looking for a, a young nigga, you know, you know what? I'm a tw- I'm switching around. A young brother. I know you got kids, so I'm a good step there. Not young brother. He done put the black power fist up, y'all. Not young brother. Because you, know, you you been on a couple movies that I idolized. You know what I'm saying? Give a give a two of them. Give a two of them. And it's like. No, give a two of them. Hmm. Give a two of the movies. Give a, right two of the movies. Two. Yeah. She, I mean, I, we already know she's been on Friday. That's that's oh. everybody knows about that. And then 
what was the other movie she was on? Uh, Think Like a Man. Or she was on Best uh, uh Best Man. Best Man, I think. Holiday. Yeah, nigga, this your woman. <clears throat> yeah, that's my woman. You better say that shit, boy. And then she was on uh Power. I ain't watched Power. But then, like, I, I didn't watch Power till she popped up on it. I was like, I was like, baby, don't you don't even need to be on Power. You you big for them. You know what I'm saying? You so big for them. She's supposed to be there home. Let me bite her booty. Fuck where I was. She tripped it. Neil All Lowe. right, guys. Or, or, or R. Lennox. R. Lennox, you a little closer in, in my age. R. Lennox, I be seeing you. You lost your weight. You know what I'm saying? It don't you count. Singing I your songs. You, you were Dreamville. You, 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 you got your natural hair. That's right. You know what I'm saying? All right, right guys. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. I gave him two shots to shoot. You shot three, but all three got rejected. I want y'all to say. Not necessarily. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before you go, I had shot my shot. No, I ain't necessarily shoot my shot. I had said something to R. Lennox on her live. Um, I had basically said something about her, her natural hair and her beautiful smile. You know what I'm saying? Just giving a regular compliment. And I was like, I like that vibe. You know what I'm saying? And she and she just started caressing her body and shit. She was like, oh. Thank you so much. I said, bitch, you better stop for I got damn pop up on your leg. Left on red like I did. Huh? You gonna DM and get left on red like I did. She didn't leave me on red. She said, Thank you, love. That was it. I didn't say nothing back because I was like, we're gonna leave on the high note. Oh yeah, we're gonna leave on a high note. Speaking of leaving on a high note, thank you guys. There y'all have it. Y'all say thank you to Mr. Ladarius Smurf Chapman. I know y'all was like, but but it wasn't really an interview. So nigga, I said in the beginning. We gonna just talk. So, oh, um, y'all heard it there. Gave me uh, two shots and shot three. All three missed again. But no, it did not fucking miss. That no, shit no, didn't no. fucking miss. Me alone, you gonna hear this shit. And you gonna be, she gonna probably be about fifty when she hear this shit. Then she gonna be like, "It's y'all nigga." I'll be rich by then. I can I can bring me alone to you in the box and let her jump at the birthday cake. No, not but in the we box. We not never put my baby in no box. Y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for listening. No baby. My live, the Darius. We'll be single next episode. If you want to find out, tune in. Thank y'all so much. Don't forget to continue to like, share, subscribe to this channel and to my videos. Don't forget you can catch it every Thursday live on Podbean podcasting app. And by 9 p.m. every Thursday, no later than every Friday morning by 8 a.m., we will be up on every platform available right now. He's smoking a Rick Ross cigar, but he ain't Rick Ross, ain't got no neck, no beard. Or no money like Rick Rose. But tune in next time to see if Ladarius does come back indeed. Appreciate it.